Hello and welcome to Ukraine in Flames, a special project by Ukraine Crisis Media Center, NGO, Euro-Atlantic Course, and Ukrainian Catholic Universities Analytical Center. My name is Victoria Zabian. I'm head of the UCMC Press Center. And today we will talk about the reconstruction plan for Ukraine. What are the first considerations Ukraine should make to build a comprehensive restoration plan? Does Ukraine have strategy of economic development that can guide the restoration? Who should be responsible for the restoration strategy? And other questions will be discussed, especially for our project by prominent experts. And uh, we are ready to start now with analysis by Valery Pekar, a lecturer at Kyiv Mohila Business School. Speaking about uh, recovery and reconstruction plan for Ukraine, first of all, we remember uh, the Marshall Plan, which helped to European countries to uh, recovery and reconstruct and rebuild the industry and infrastructure after Second World War. Uh, in, from some points of view, this is similar as far as many Ukrainian cities are totally destroyed. Indeed, uh, for the moment, after the first month of the active phase of the war, uh, there are many parts of Ukraine which are still alive and not so damaged, but and we, should, we believe, we hope and pray that they will be safe. But indeed, uh, damages uh, and deconstruction uh, are great. And uh, we believe that this recovery and reconstruction will create not only the new life for Ukrainian cities and industry, but also many opportunities for international investors. Uh, so what are priorities, in my humble opinion, for that? Uh, I will start not from money, but from institutions. First of all, uh, we should uh, renew and relaunch many Ukrainian institutions to create the uh, real investing attractors and to create a high level of economic freedom and uh, good economic investment climate for all investors, both domestic and international. As far as uh, many institutions in Ukraine, uh, 30 years after uh, getting its independence are still uh, full of Soviet legacy. And we need to uh, introduce the great liberalization of economy deregulation, privatization, uh, to uh, make judicial reform, uh, to decrease dramatically state regulation in many spheres, which uh, until now uh, involves a lot of Soviet legacy, a lot of uh, acts and laws, which were adopted many, many years ago and doesn't reflect uh, economic realities of today. So, and creating this high level of economic freedom and uh, investment attractiveness, we indeed should be very uh, attractive for many countries as not only the uh, good market, but also as uh, the field for producing. Uh, our relatively cheap and very well educated labor indeed creates unique opportunities to uh, produce complicated products and services here in Ukraine. So what are our priorities? Indeed, first of all, uh, recovery of Ukrainian cities. And then, indeed, roads, uh, rapid transportation, and so on. Second is energy sector, uh, where we have great resources, uh, great reserves of oil and gas, lithium, titanium, uh, rare earth elements, all these things need international investment and this could create a huge potential production source for the whole world. And third, indeed, agriculture, uh, where Ukraine can really feed one billion people in the world. But we need to make, make more added values in agriculture. That means we need, we need investment for that. Indeed, uh, number four is the digital economy. This is a pure investment in human capital, 
And uh, now Ukrainians being absolutely global and working at any places in the world uh, can create a huge network of human resources for uh, not only for outsourcing, not only for development services, but for Ukrainian products and the number of Ukrainian unicorns will uh, be 10 times greater within several years, I'm sure. So those sectors are priorities, but indeed, first of all, we need to invest into institutional building. And then, indeed, infrastructure, roads, uh, oil and gas, agriculture, and so on. And Marshall Plan, as far as we remember, is, was not only for money, it was for the liberalization of the economy and creates new opportunities for uh, recovered economies of uh, European countries, which practically led, led European economy to uh, this, the high position which it bears now. And we believe that Ukraine could be a real pearl of uh, European economic world. We also have got a comment from the executive director of Center for Economic Strategy, Lip Vyshlinsky. Let's take a look. Ukraine incurred significant uh, damages and losses because of Russian invasion uh, and war against Ukraine. Even in the first months of war, uh, estimated damages to physical assets are at least 70 billion US dollars, and this is a very conservative estimate. Uh, approximately a third of the economy is not working now. We have uh, risks related to the new harvest that need to be planted uh, in the next uh, months. And we have additional expenditures on humanitarian aid, on support to internally displaced people, uh, on uh, military that has to you know, repel attacks from Russian army. So we uh, believe that uh, the total uh, size of uh, losses and damages to the Ukrainian economy will uh, be in hundreds of billions of US dollars. And uh, the new and specially designed plan of uh, reconstruction of Ukraine should be put in place to finance this, this reconstruction. It uh, could be financed uh, first by our international partners, by the European Union, by the United States, but also we need to understand uh, what could be legal mechanisms to seize Russian assets abroad, to seize proceeds from uh, selling oil and gas produced in Russia, and uh, how to uh, get reparations from Russia for for those damages inflicted on Ukraine. Uh, we believe that uh, designing this uh, this mechanism should be done as soon as possible, uh, so that uh, as uh, military action stops and Russian forces are out of Ukraine, we could proceed with the reconstruction of the country. We think that uh, this process should be also uh, coordinated with um, uh, EU candidate status, EU member candidate status for Ukraine that we expect uh, that will be granted to Ukraine in next months. If uh, if it is done and if uh, EU leaders support granting uh, EU candidate status for Ukraine, then um, the design of this reconstruction effort could be in line with uh, those programs that new EU member states uh, had uh, after they uh, uh, they were. Uh, accepted as uh, candidates to the European Union and also like, the help, the structural funds that they were receiving after they were uh, granted membership in the European Union. 
So uh, it could be a very strong mechanism that also could create an institutional uh, framework for uh, reconstruction, not just rebuilding uh, old houses and old infrastructure, but designing the very new infrastructure, the very new planning for um, better quality of life and uh, the general quality of infrastructure closer to the, to, to the ones that we see in Poland, for example. And uh, like as an option, the European Union could administer this fund, as in fact uh, is proposed by, uh, by the EU leadership now. Another option is uh, creating uh, funds that could be managed by European Bank of Reconstruction and Development or by any other reputable organization. Uh, not only EU funds could be used uh, on, this, uh, on this first stage, uh, we believe that uh, our international partners could donate special drawing rights that were issued uh, at the International Monetary Fund, and the size of this uh, donation could be also in hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, this is, in fact, virtual currency that could be converted into very real currency that uh, very real money that will be used for reconstruction of Ukraine. We understand that our needs will be enormous. And uh, however, like without rebuilding infrastructure, without investment into Ukraine, we could not bring back, back millions of refugees that left Ukraine. The only way to bring them back uh, in full or majority of them is uh, to propose uh, economic opportunities to them at home that are uh, uh, such promise them um, uh, good and uh, uh, not poor life at home. So uh, we believe that uh, that on this stage, uh, designing this uh, plan for reconstruction uh, in uh, discussions with infrastructure experts. In discussions with uh, urban planners, with, uh, uh, for example, uh, representatives, majors, chief architects of those uh, towns and cities in uh, Eastern Europe that uh, had a successful transition from post-communist cities to new, uh, to new more efficient cities. This planning should be done, uh, but also like we need to have commitments of uh, international donors because Ukraine will need a lot of money and without money we could not uh, bring the quality of life in Ukraine at least back to the levels that was before the war. And one more important message uh, was prepared within our project and we are ready to share it with you right now. Ukrainians believe in victory. And it is important that this fate is shared by our international partners. All partners of the Chamber and new European friends admire the, the courage of Ukrainian people. The next issue in our conversation always is a plan to help Ukraine. It is grati uh, gratifying to see the solidarity of Europeans uh, and, our, and our, our friends in helping Ukraine and their readiness to support the so-named Marshall Plan for our reconstruction. Even the idea of the possibility of rapid and large-scale reconstruction of Ukraine inspire fate in our future and give us the strength to survive in the war. The voice will be over. A consolidated and strong Europe will assist to rebuild every home, road, and hospital in Ukraine together. We all live with this hope for, for a new Ukraine as an innovative hub of Europe and outpost of the continent. It is extremely valuable that the European business community supports Ukraine. During my meetings with the Chamber's longtime partners in Europe, I always urge them to join Ukrainians' reconstruction plan. This is uh, the idea that is now helping us to survive, to win, to win in the war. 
I see the solidarity and hear about the readiness to help Ukraine from old and new acquaintances. The Slovenian, Belgian, Polish, German, French and other chambers as well as Yebra Chambers and International Chamber of Commerce have confirmed their readiness to restore Ukrainian economy. The plan of reconstruction for Ukraine can be implemented with the help of global economic power. We also hope uh, for the support of the United States, Europe, leading Asian and Middle Eastern countries. I will be more it will be more effective to heal the infrastructural wounds of Ukraine by joint efforts. A new strong economic and political alliance based on the common values will create prospects for the business of country that will support the reconstruction of Ukraine. Thank you for your support. This is a key component of the victory. You've been watching an episode for the special project by Ukraine Crisis Media Center, Euro-Atlantic Course NGO, and Analytical Center of Ukrainian Catholic University dedicated to Russia-Ukraine war, Ukraine in flames. In order to stay tuned, please subscribe to our channel and share the word. In the description to this video, you can find the information how personally you can help uh, Ukraine against Russian aggression. If you find our job useful, please like, share this video. Everything is gonna be Ukraine.